Hi, Shannon. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's I'm so excited to have you. I've had just such a great time getting to know you over the years and super excited to share who you are with our listeners today. Awesome. Thank you. Hopefully so they're welcome. ready for that. I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if anyone's ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Will you share a little bit about your journey in finding your spiritual gifts? Yes. Um, so it was kind of a messy journey. Um, I would say I wasn't, um, my journey actually started off at a very young age. And I think mm. spirit was very much part of my life, um, although I didn't even know it. So mm. it was just kind of a being. Um, I grew up in New Jersey and both of the houses I lived in were um, in the woods. So I was constantly just in nature a lot, um, spending time and just kind of in communion with that and not even knowing it. So um, as I journeyed into adolescence, my family moved from New Jersey to Colorado. Um, and during that time, there was a lot of lot of changes happening. Um, and then junior high to top it off. So at that time, I think I was I was very empathic and had no idea. So I was very much absor absorbing the world, taking on all those emotions. It was a lot to take on. Um, and so from there, my parents did not know how to handle me, which I don't, I totally understand why they didn't. They came, I came from a very practical household. So they would put me in therapy. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. And at that point, I kind of took it as this is a problem. So I'm going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I just kind of tucked it to the side. Um, for many years. So it wasn't until I got married, I got married fairly young um, and had three girls. My third one screamed the first 12 months of her life, which really put me to the edge of thing because at that time I had two other little ones. I was running a business with my husband at the time and I literally, I, it, she broke me open um, in a way where I could not literally, could not even go to the grocery store without feeling so overwhelmed. Everything was, I was just had anxiety about everything. And I started going through and I was like, this is no way to live. I don't understand why this keeps occurring. So it was in that I started kind of digging in. Um, and in that I find, I was like, I think I'm empathic. So it was first, that was the first step. Um, but in that I started realizing oh, maybe I have some intuitive abilities too. It wasn't until I started kind of like observing my own self um, and kind of how I was going through life. So in that um, one year, my whole family came out for Christmas and I just randomly decided, oh, I want to go see a psychic. So up until that point, I had never even entered this world. So my mom said, okay, your sisters and I are going to Target. We're going to drop you off. Don't tell your grandmother what you're spending your Christmas money on. So she drops me off. I have no clue what I'm doing. I walk into an office and um, the medium psychic or psychic medium at the time was like exactly what you would think of a psychic medium. She had black hair. She kind of sat in the corner like this. And I entered and she said, oh, I see you're clairvoyant. Well, at that point I had zero knowledge. So I thought I had a disease at the time. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And she said, oh, honey, you have no clue what's going on, do you? And I said, clearly not. So that was really the beginning where somebody kind of validated something was going on before more than I could put knowledge to. So at that, I, I kind of went with her for a little bit, didn't feel right. I ended up finding the Park City Medium. Um, walked in and the same thing. She said, you're clairvoyant. At that time, I was like, okay, I got this. <laughs> and through years of training um, through her, invited me into a private circle. And there I really realized that I was, it wasn't just empathic. I had intuitive abilities and also was a medium, which took me a while to grasp. So that was the beginning of it. Um, but in that path, really, there's been a lot of self-discovery, a lot of discovery. I think I've taken a lot of the mystical path. Um, yeah. And every day it's just opened up a whole new life. Um, 
and it's just exciting. And so at this point, I just want to share with the world all these things I've learned um, and the excitement of walking around and really getting a handle on anxiety, which I think cripples so many of us. Um, and to be able to, to be able to breathe and not have that on my chest all the time is just huge. So mm. that really inspired me. And as I started kind of coming into my gifts and abilities, one of them is being able to see the God light in everybody. And that to me is just the biggest, best thing there is out there. And I just want to share it with everybody because a lot of us are sitting in shame, we have guilt, we have, we feel unworthy and to be able to see that light and that pureness in everybody and be able to reflect it back is what I genuinely feel is my true calling. Thank you for sharing that. Um, for, for those of us that forget what clairvoyant means, I know there's a bunch of clairs and one is like you can see and you can feel like it's different senses. So do you mind sharing just a little bit more of what you mean when you say clairvoyant? No problem. So the clairs are French word for um, clear. So clairvoyance is clear seeing. There's mm -hmm. clair essence, which is clear feeling. There's clair audience, which is clear audible hearing. Uh, clear sentience, which is clear tasting. Um, and clear cognizant, which is clear oh, knowing. Right. So um, basically they're all part of our five senses, but they're the multi-sensories. So when we're saying clairvoyant, a lot of times that's seeing in the mind's eye, which a lot of people say, well, what does that mean? So um, one of the ways I try to explain to people, two ways is um, like, if you're ever driving, which some of us have, you know, driving and you kind of get into your thoughts and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm driving because you've had this whole movie playing in your head. That is your clairvoyance. That's your, that's your um, clair, you're able to see in your mind's eye. So we do that even when we're envisioning things. We, uh, we've used examples of, okay, let's pretend we're at the beach right now. And we can use the visuals if you see that is clairvoyance, that's your mind's eye. But we could also pretend we're at the beach and hear birds. So that's your clear audience. So it's actually not physical. And, and typically when you're working with someone, like it, like even when I came to see you, like the, the person that was recommending you, like they, they just didn't even have words. It's like the, you, just something you need to experience. The way that I feel when I come and work with you, I, I kind of feel like we have like a, a filter, like, you know, you put on your, your heating unit, right. And your air conditioner <laughs> and it's like this spiritual filter and we go out into the world and, you know, it, it, it sucks in all of those things. And in working with you, I feel like it's this conversation of my spirit to your spirit and you're able to like translate all these things that I forget in my day to day and really shine that light and reflect that light back to me to be like, oh, you're right. That that is happening. I, I have been sensing that or seeing that or, you know what, you're right. I wouldn't have responded this way three years ago. And it's it's such a gift what you do, but it's also really hard to put into words what an experience is like how how would you describe what it you do? Is, um, I think I think too for me it is because each experience is different and probably knowing when you come there's certain certain times things are focused at that time that's needed. So really in a nutshell, I would say when I'm working, what I'm doing is I'm communicating soul to soul. Mm -hmm. And I think the importance of knowing is a lot of times we're operating out of our egoic operating system, which is our mind, our thoughts, we hold our emotions there, our body, our physical. Um, and that is actually not who we truly are. Um, a lot of times people don't even realize the thoughts that are going through their head. And mainly, most of the time, they're negative. About 95% of them are negative and repetitive. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when people sit down, I am able to connect at a soul to soul level. And people sometimes will even voice what they're thinking. And I can even tell, well, no, your soul's telling me something different. And so the soul is the essence of your true self. I personally believe it's the meeting place 
of your true self and God. And so it has that spark light and that's where we're all connected. So when I see people, I see them um, almost, I first see them before they're physical, I see their light. And mm-hmm. so I'm able to go in and feel them. And that I would say that would be my gift. I'm able to see their God light and their pureness. And then I can sense where there's blocks and I'm able to go in and kind of help clean those areas up. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of time, they're, they can be major things. They could be, they could be little things we've had that we've just stored away for a very, very long time. But the reality, reality is energy never dissipates. So you either, you either transform it or transmit it. So a lot of times we're carrying some of these pains or these trauma wounds, and we have no idea. I, I have so many clients who come in and say, oh, everything on paper looks great, but I'm really not happy. And that is so much of our stories, right? We're doing a lot of what, what we think society wants, what our parents want it for us, what we think our friends like, and we're not really answering our true selves. And, and that's what I hope to bring to everybody is that connection, that reminder of that we're so much bigger than this physical body we're carrying. Yeah. And, and I think it's also important to note that words are really hard, right? Like, um, if we could just like read each other's mind, like that would just be great. And, and, and so much is left even in, in what you're experiencing and what I'm hearing may be different than what spirit may be telling you. And, and so there's still a lot that is left up for me to interpret, for me to ponder, for me to take back and explore. And it's not you saying like, this is what you need to go do. This is, you know, a questioning and, you know, what's going on with this. So for example, um, one of the first times I came in to see you, (laughs) you saw some, like something with my feet and I'm like, oh, I love my feet. (laughs) I've been doing yoga. And you're like, no, 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 no. Like something's holding you back. It's like this anchor. And then we were able to work through that and realize, oh, of course it's this thing, right? It's this codependent relationship in business. And and it was taking a different lens of somebody to have spirit show me that. Right. And, And that's the beauty of it because when I step in, I'm not stepping in, connect it to your everyday life. I'm stepping in at this clarity with spirit to say, here's, here's the truth. The essence of the truth is coming up. You might have viewed it this way or put it in this kind of a framework, but you might not be seeing the actual, what the beauty of the situation is. Mm -hmm. And because we are so taught, um, and used to it, it's part of our ego to go to the negative side. Sometimes we take some situations and go, oh, well, gosh, look, what have I done wrong to deserve this or not? Or they go right into the negative instead of seeing the actual, the the whole full picture. And there's actually, you know, healing and growth and beauty in that where sometimes we just, we folk, we pigeonhole things where we, yeah. we don't need to. Yeah. And we take things too seriously. I will tell you, spirit's always like, come on now. (laughs) Come on now. I have journals and journals and journals because I'm a note taker. I'm always taking notes. I'm taking notes right now of like things that have come up as we've worked together. And then I kid you not, it's like the 13th time. It's, I think it's my idea. And I'm like, oh, this is what I should do. (laughs) And, you know, you just, you just know, like God is up there chuckling and working through spirit and be like, okay, she finally got it, but you know, good job. Good job. You for finally figuring out, even though I've been telling you. Right. And and I think it creates this awareness for us to see the synchronicities. It creates this way for us to see the beauty and the magic in, in the really simple things, right. In, in the birds, in nature, in the sunsets. And it allows us to, I think, be vulnerable and be open when it comes to spiritual things too. It's huge. Um, Like one of the things I tell a lot of clients is go behold, Mm -hmm. go out, 
just go be just take a moment go look at when's the last time you looked at like the cracks in the sidewalk and all the ants going around or the little bugs or the blade of grass i mean those are things that have the essence of god and the universe in all of it and we forget to take those times um it is it is such such a huge thing and two with time god doesn't have a time he doesn't have he's not like okay you got 10 years to get this done there is no time space reality in the spirit realm so there is no rush for them so we put these time limits on ourselves and these restraints which puts us into panic and into and puts re, re um, resistance into actually what we're trying to accomplish as you were saying that um i i remembered I mean, the many conversations that we've had ar around this website and around this podcast. And I mean, really over two years, the frustration that I felt for so long that it wasn't just magically, you know, coming together and it wasn't, you know, from point A to point B, but it was this very different way of doing things. And in those two years and in that stretching, you know, I got to learn how to do things in a different way. And I've gotten to see things from a different perspective and how to do business in a way that is, is very different than I have ever done anything. And it is this way of inviting spirit into our conversations of being led on how to share and how to create something that's different. And we don't always get to have the time and space to reflect back on the process and for you to share the gifts that you have to encourage us right along that path. Like we know what we want to do ultimately, but we get like, I got so frustrated in that process and, you know, time and time again, you would say, well, spirits telling me <laughs> to remind you <laughs> that it, this hasn't been done before, right? Like this, this is right. something new and, you know, to work through that. So thank you for sharing that. I, I love that. And with that too, and for everybody, when you start this journey and you start really anchoring in at a soul level, that's when your calling and your purpose starts to fire up. So you get this all of a sudden, this, this ignition of like, oh, I got to get moving. I got to get moving because you do. The thing is, is we as humans want instant gratification. We want it now. And part of this whole thing is the process in it. Right. So spirit, how many times is like, Hey, hang in there. Right. There's a lot of patience <laughs> is a huge part of spirit. And I know, and I can feel it. I sensed it with you. I've sensed it with several's, right? It's just this frustrating, like, okay, I want it now, but there is a beauty in the process. And a lot of times we can't see it in the moment. It's not until the time of reflection and reflection is so huge. I mean, how many times do we offer or in sessions? Because a lot of times we want that, oh, I am not doing enough. We rarely take the time to look at how much we've grown. Mm -hmm. And that is such a huge process in the spiritual path. You need to take that time because there is a lot of change happening. And, and out of um, foundational level too, where, where when the change comes, it doesn't revert back to old ways. So it's huge, but like I said, we all, you know, I'm from Jersey. I want things quick. <laughs> well, and, and one thing that you've taught me over the years also is the importance of creating that daily practice. Do you mind sharing your, about your tree and about, um, I don't have a word for it, but it, but it's the sacredness in your, it's your morning, in your routine. Absolutely. Um, is probably hands down one of the most important practices, not just for myself, but I would say for anybody who's going on the spiritual path, people don't want to hear it, but consistency in showing up is huge. And when you make a sacred space, you're creating a space of energy. So, so when you meet there, it's already, you're stepping into it. So, um, but I'll start back a little bit. Um, 
So anybody who knows me usually knows I have a tree. So I live on the top of a mountain up in Park City. Um, and it's funny because I kind of I kind of reflect back to how did I even find the tree? I don't know how I found that exact one other than that I was just drawn. But part of why I started going outside was when I started trying to get a handle on my um, anxiety, I started meditating. Well, I was doing it in the closet. I also had a one and a half year old at the time, a three year old and a five year old who could always find me regardless. So I think the way why I originally started going out was because of that, was just to get that space without hearing mom, mom, you know? Um, and, and two, another part of that. So, so I started going outside um, and doing my meditative and contemplation at my tree and it's in the woods. So how I normally start my days off is, um, you also know I'm a huge fan of Father Richard Rohr. So I start every morning off with his daily meditations, which usually will offshoot into something else that I'll dissect and like just dive into. Um, it could be from Christian mystics. I've been doing a lot with Hindu recently. It could just be a medium. It does it, anything in the spiritual realm, anything I'm drawn to. And I have practiced this enough to know I'm in communion with spirit all the time. So it's not a one-way street anymore. It's a two-way. So it's a constant conversation. So I'll also get downloads. Um, so I'll start by doing kind of like a little study or whatnot. And then I will go outside um, and go to my tree. And that's usually where I'll do some contemplate. Whatever I've just digested, I start contemplating. Um, and I kind of get in talks with spirit at that point. And then I get usually get a lot of downloads. Um, and then I will back up to my tree and go into meditation. I'll take a couple deep breaths. Um, I've learned at this point, I used to be very, you know, I had to do a certain routine. Now I'm more go with the flow. Like for example, this morning was getting my chakras in line. I usually never do that, but today I could just tell, and it's kind of just a natural thing that happens. And I'm to the point now where I know when I'm done, where, where I'm good to go, where my body is cleansed. I tell a lot of people, it's like a spiritual shower too, because I run my energy at that time. I balance it out. So I take um, energy from mother earth. I run it in my feet. Um, I go up to my head and I bring in divine energy through, and then I just cleanse my soul out and just cleanse my energy. So when I'm to a point where I feel like, okay, I'm good to go, I will go. And that is so huge. Um, I think I started learning how big it was by when I wasn't going to the tree and everyone in my family would say, mom, you didn't go to the tree this morning. And I knew it because I would be spiraling. So it, it is huge. It is huge. It's one thing that I tell people try not to miss. Like you don't need to be ridiculous, but five, five days out of seven, if you can find a spiritual practice that works for you, highly recommend it. Um, I, I usually recommend for the most part to start it off in the morning too. That sets the tone for the whole day. And so sometimes I use that analogy. I'm sure I've, I've used it with you. I say, it's the equivalent of being a boat tied to the dock. If I do not go out and do my daily meditation and my spiritual practices, I'm not tethered to that dock. So when a storm comes, the next thing I know, I'm in the middle of the sea and I am just at the mercy of it. Whereas if I go and take that time in the morning, it's the equivalent of being tethered to that dock. Does that not mean a storm? Storm's still coming through. It just means I'm not adrift. It means I'm more grounded. I'm able to be, to, to not be overcome by it. And I think that's huge too. So I am a huge believer in that. Um, I would say almost every client that comes in, and it's funny because I won't even think about it, but spirit will be like, hey, don't forget what's their practice. And that usually always comes up because it's huge. And I, I love that the, the way your spiritual practice looks, it, it includes prayer, it includes meditations, it includes um, bringing God into what that looks like. And that it's outside, even in the winter, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Winter snow right now. And I'm very humbled right now because the snow's melting. So there's been a couple days I just 
go into the snow and face plant going down. So it's very humbling, but, but it's also a beautiful time because I like to go out there in the dark. I like when, when it's still, um, and, and it is a way to be in communion with nature and spirit and all of that. So it is, it is so such a beautiful thing. I highly recommend it for everybody. And if you don't have a tree, because we don't have a tree, you can still create a space. It can be in your home. It can be outside, but it can be somewhere that you're, you're going to regularly. And then energetically, because it becomes this place that you go to commune with spirit, it becomes a sacred space. And it does bring that energy to it. Just like when we go to church, you know, when we're, we're, we're sitting in a sacred meeting or we're, you know, learning in a class, like those, those are the spaces that we have um, access to spirit. So important. We've talked about it too. Mm -hmm. Like why, why do churches hold that energy? Because it's so sacred. We come there to christen our children. We come there to, to be in union for marriage. Mm -hmm. We come there at the ending of life for funerals and we just gather in the spirit. And so in those, that is such a sacred place. So even if you're not religious or even in tune with that, it's hard. You'd be hard pressed to walk into an old church and not feel something. Yeah. Yeah. And because that is, and exactly what you said, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be outside. It could be anywhere. If, as long as you create that space, it will hold and it will meet you as long as you continue to meet it. I love that. Um, one thing that has been surprising for me over the last few years in, in really wanting to you know, follow the spirit more, follow my intuition and learn how to connect with it is it's completely different than I thought it was. And I would love to know like what, what would you share with someone that's wanting to start a spiritual practice? That's wanting to, um, follow their intuition more. What would you say to them? I would say it's the first thing I would say is let go of all your thoughts of what you think it's supposed to be, because it's not, it's it, when you're, when you're in line with spirit, you're in the flow of life. And a lot of times that's not how, what we think it is. So um, a lot of times I tell people it's, it's simple. It's going back to that soul connection, right? Because that's where the, our spirit lives. So it's in the being an awareness. The first key to that is awareness. So what I first start with people, a lot of times, like the first time they'll come in, uh, the first thing I'm like, wow, your thought patterns. Now I can't read exactly word to word what people are thinking, but I can pick up on the vibration of it. I can tell if they're kind of like an all over thinker or bullet point thinker, but a lot of times the energy's there. So I can pick up if they're negative or not. And so that's the first thing. And so I can see if they're trapped in their thoughts. So I'll start saying, hey, what are you, what are you saying to yourself? What I'm picking up, you're saying to yourself, you would never talk to your best friend that way. And usually people go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying that, right? It's almost this first moment of like a little bit of embarrassment of like, I can't believe I was talking that way, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the first to get it into awareness of like, you're not your thoughts. Because in that moment, there's a break in their thought pattern. And so the soul starts to speak and it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. hey, that's not me. That's not me. So the first thing is to be in awareness. And a lot of times I tell people, feel into it. Your soul is speaking to you a lot. The way the soul speaks is through intuition, which is not thoughts, it's feelings and knowings. So a lot of times intuition makes no sense logically. Start listening to that, even though, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just trying to remember in working with this, with you, like, like, I can't remember the example off the top of my head now, but it's, it's, it's your intuition. Isn't you need to go get better at the grocery store, right? Your yeah. intuition and the way I was always told the spirit was like a soft spirit. The spirit does not speak that way to me. It's like a gauntlet and it's loud and it's, it's very, <laughs> um, kind of like jars me sometimes. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. I'm here. Right. And it's, it, for me, the first time it happened, it was this moment where like, I literally like had to turn the car around and, and go back home. Um, so what you're saying just with, with 
the thoughts and intuition share a little bit more about that you said like it's that feeling and it's kind of this knowing it's it's, it's not a, the thoughts a, that you keep spiraling but it's it's like that knowing like a lot of times people we can always go into hindsight you know i should have would have could have like mm -hmm. i knew a lot of times that's a good way to get people to start understanding it could be as simple as like you know we're busy moms right i'm heading down I'm, i've got the girls we're heading down to ballet and i have this kind of off feeling that something doesn't feel right or i should stop at a neighbor's house right so logically in my head i'd be like well i don't have time i'm already late i have to get 30 minutes down here yada 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 but i keep feeling this pull right mm -hmm. if you listen to that pull say i go and stop at the neighbor's house and i just happen to go in she might have needed me at a time there might have been something going on or she might have had something to give to me that i needed like a message so we never know i mean it would be great if god would deliver these messages with like a ups driver that was like hello here kathy i have a message for you <laughs> but it doesn't and so when we knew and like i tell everybody too when you start using your soul and listening to that your intuition, it is no different than working a physical muscle. The thing is we have let our brains or our bodies a lot of time taking over. And the reality is the essence of our soul is our truth. That will be here way before, way longer when our bodies are gone, it was here before we got here. So we need to nurture that part and we need to listen to it more. And it's not something you just decide, okay, I'm just gonna tune in because a lot of times it's, it's like a relationship. If you haven't talked to somebody forever, you're not gonna pick up usually and go, okay, it takes time to regain gain that connection so in that it, it's constantly paying attention of like okay well my mind's thinking this but how do i really feel about it yeah and it's in the in between right like i i really always kind of felt like it would be in these moments of meditation and i would be given divine guidance and it would be this like big and like ah <laughs> and it's not it's at the grocery store you're doing 10 other things and you just have this like i need to go do this um and I'd say 90% of the time, it doesn't make sense. And even half of the time of that, I don't know that we even get to know what it was. And, and it's a rare, it feels like a rare gift when we do get to realize like, oh, this is, this is why. But I also feel like what you were saying with the spiritual muscle, the more that we listen, the more that we show um, that we trust it and that we're choosing it, I feel like that's how we amplify it. That's how we get more in alignment and more in tune with it. Absolutely. Because those subtle nudges, think about yeah. it. If all of us, if, if all of us take a moment to reflect on like a moment of like, oh, I should have listened because I knew. And usually, like I said, it's in hindsight, right? It's like, I knew I did what I thought was right, but I kind of knew I shouldn't have, right? A lot of times when I ask people, I'm like, when you have gone with your gut, your intuition, have, has it ever led you astray? And I have yet to have one person say that it has. Mm. So that's one thing. The other thing is it's subtle. Like you were saying, when it comes in hard, it's usually been giving you nudges before it comes in hard. So um, as you become more aware of it, you just train. I'm to a point now where I almost don't even listen to my thoughts. I almost go completely from a soul level at this point, but it's, again, it didn't happen overnight. It's been years and years of training. That's getting up and doing that spiritual practice. That's a lot of times I didn't listen and learn from not listening to listen to again, you know? So it's not something that was just like, oh, I'm so magical and oh, I'm so, so spiritually in tune. It's taken a lot of practice and it's being an awareness of it. And, and like I said, I have yet to have a time where I've listened to it that has not served my higher good. Well, and I like, remembering what it feels like in those moments what what you know in hind, using the hindsight to look back and to see you know what did that feel like and what did that look like and the next time that it comes up how how can i maybe choose differently right and that's the only way we learn i mean we yeah. will not it, it, until and two like it's just it's practice it's practice it's practice yeah, yeah. But it is your intuitive, your, your, your soul is what is in connection with all. 
end in higher source, right? Yeah. So it's 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 in a language of its own where where it's not getting cluttered by the everyday, the what society told you to do, what your parents want you to achieve, what you're trying to do to look like a good neighbor or churchgoer or whatever. It it literally it comes in at a place that is nothing of but truth and genuineness and love and acceptance there's no judging when you get into the soul i've yet to find a judgy soul it is nothing but all loving all new it it is nothing but all loving and all just wanting to connect and for the higher good yeah i have i have some curiosity around how your relationship with god has shifted over the last few years as you've worked on your spiritual gifts and your spiritual practice. See, I feel like I got to get a tissue for that because it is like, even right now I'm overwhelmed. It's like, uh, is the most beautiful relationship I could ever, ever describe, you know? And it started off with a guy floating around with lightning bolts, just waiting to get me or any of those others. That's how I first perceived, although I didn't, I didn't. So my, my initial connection was very open and very much kind of how it is now, but there was a time, unfortunately, where we religion put this God in a box and he was scary and I needed to do what was right where now the God I'm in communion with is just this all loving all all just all inclusive loving being and the best part is I can see him in everything and everywhere And that, when I start tapping into that, I'm like, oh, get me on top of the mountain. I want to tell everybody because it is the most beautiful thing. And it really, once I tap into that energy, all is well, all is well. And really, that's really what I want people to have that connection to. And it's become a very much, um, I would say I'm just very much in relation. I'm very much every day. I'm like, what can I do for you? what can I do? And I, and it's just, and I just feel like I, all is well, that is the best way I could say it. Thank you. Thank you You for sharing that. It's so, it's, it's so important for us to remember that we are these spiritual beings and that we, we are here to make a difference, right? Right. We are light. We, we are here to do bigger things. Right. And it's huge. And that's the thing. The light is all welcoming, all welcoming. And so to keep shining that in the way, you know, even at times, like with things going on in the world, like Ukraine and every, even in those moments to be able to step in that God light and know all is well. And then also to be in that, that what's so huge for me is to know that there is no, there is no bad soul there is not one soul if anything when when i see a soul that that is doing wrong it's they've separated from the light they're still a child of god they are still godlike they just we have free will so it is up to us we either stand in the light sometimes we get and all of us at times sometimes we separate we come back sometimes we get really really far others bring us back and sometimes we get far and we don't come back on this earth plane And that's unfortunate. However, like it says in the Bible, the light, the darkness will never overcome the light completely. And so in that, I always have hope. Um, that's yeah. And, and it's so important that we remember that, that we don't, that we don't lose that hope and that we don't lose that light. Do you mind sharing a little bit about, um, how to um, share your light with someone that's maybe like mourning or grieving. I'm thinking specifically of an experience that you had in church with a family that you just wanted to hold space for and to love. Yes, I would love to, because it's so huge. Um, being empathic and being able to feel people, there's a lot of pain in the world. And we've talked about it energetically unfortunately pain is much heavier and it sticks like velcro (laughs) higher energy is very light it's like teflon it slips off so 
there's a lot of times being empathic and for those who are empathic, part of that, that ability is feeling the pain in others and wanting to fill that void, right? Um, and the reality is that I'm also a busy mom. I've got a lot going on, but there's times I can sense people, right? And I can't, sometimes it's awkward just to go into a random person and say, hey, just so you know, I was sitting a few pews behind you. You kind of know me, but not really. Just so you know, I'm a psychic and a medium and I can feel your pain and your, you know. So I had a couple that Kathy's referring to that, that you are referring to that was sitting in who had lost a daughter and they were in a lot of pain and their daughter started coming to me in the service. And I said, I don't, I instantly wanted to help them, but didn't really know. So in that moment, I literally just kept taking my light and building it and sending it to them, sending them to them to heal. And it was so crazy to watch even for myself because I knew I was doing it but to watch them in that moment they had no idea I was sitting behind them but there had been tears coming down the side of their face and and after I had sent them light within a couple minutes all of a sudden they kind of started sitting up a little bit kind of started their energy started shifting and they probably didn't even know what was going on but there was a light that started coming over them and so the other thing is prayers are so huge. Everyone says prayers, when so, but I will tell you that's energy. Energy is it's there. We might not be able to see it, but it has such huge impact. When people are at times of having hardship and we send them prayers, it literally lifts them energetically. So it is so important, just as important as negative thoughts. Our negative thoughts have just as much impact. And if you go back to what I was saying, you have all these people who have out of control thoughts and they're mainly negative, they're adding to the whole energetic field. So sending light and being aware of it is huge. And we all have light. It comes from our soul. It's in our solar plexus usually. And we all have the ability to share that. And we know- so yeah. So when you, you say you're, sh you're, you're sending light, you're not like, I don't know, like physically doing it. It's within your mind's eye that you're sitting there, you're pulling in energy. You said you were taking the light and building it. What, what, do, what does that mean? I feel it. I genuinely feel like, so I hold a lot of times people either hold their souls in their solar plexus or up in their heart chakra in that area. I hold mine in my solar plexus. So when I say I'm building light, I'm genuine. It's kind of physical. Like it's a physical feeling for me. It's almost this like all my energy gets drawn here. And I literally, I envision myself in alignment with God and just building it, building it, building it so that like, and I can feel it like, and it's, I'll say I'll build balls of light for certain people, for certain things. And, and once I feel it's big enough or whatever size it needs to be, I will, I will push it outward. So yes, it's my mind's eye, but I do kind of like, there's like a, there's a feeling I can feel. Well, I remember the first few times I met with you, like I couldn't do anything the rest of the day. <laughs> I had to like go lay <laughs> down and I learned because I was using the energy within me instead of using the energy of the universe. Can you share a little bit more about how to kind of funnel that and connect with that? Like you shared in meditation, like the grounding and then kind of the calling down from the light. So for me, it is, it is, um, at this point, it's a real split second kind of a thing, but what's, what, what is ultimately happening is I basically take a time out from what's going on externally in this life plane. And I go internally and I instantly connect with source and I'm connecting with mother earth and I'm building the power in my soul. And so in that, I just, and, and I'm putting all good intents, but it's like, it's got moxie to it. It's not like, it's not like a, eh, I'm going to send them a, you know, goodwill wish or whatever. It's a genuine, like build my power up um, and use source energy and earth to just, to, to fill it. And then I just send it outward. It's very concentrated. Very concentrated. What is moxie? 
that's like just like that's like muscle in the spirit well it's just muscle <laughs> usually a muscle fem feminine muscle but i like to use that word a lot hmm. even though nobody knows what it means but you know. what else do you want to share with our listeners today I would, I think I would, I think for all my biggest wish for humanity, for souls is to connect with themselves, to not take things so seriously in the sense, don't take yourself so seriously too. And life is not so much an end game. It's not a pinnacle, it's circular. And it's a constant journey of expansion and contraction, but know in each place, even in those frustrating moments that that stuff is happening there's growth happening there and that's all part of it and it and as you continue on that process it's not necessarily an easy one but it is one well worth it because you start to have a depth in life a depth in everything this connection to all and and just it life starts lightening up in a way and it becomes in a flow where it's not so jarring and not so difficult and it just becomes a, like, I never thought that in my mid forties that I would get excited to wake up every day because I didn't know what was going to be around the corner. And I'm at that point now where 10 years ago, I wasn't, I was like, oh, this is going to be, this life, life is hard, you know? And so it's just beautiful. And it's beautiful to be able to witness other people's journeys and to go on this journey. So I would say, don't be so, don't take it so serious. I like that. And how can our listeners connect with you? So you can connect with me. I have a website. It's soul to soul mediumship.com. Um, that is the best way. And um, we're actually, I'm in the works of starting soul talks, like a community project to bring people in um if we want to talk about god and jesus we go to church if we want to work out we go to the gym so we're trying to create a space for people to kind of talk about these things so it's open and raw um i also have a podcast that's going to be coming out workshops coming out so just kind of exploring as we go wonderful we'll be sure to put all of your contact information in our show notes thanks so much shannon thank love you. you love you <laughs>